Hello, everyone. Welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is Snowman at Night, an accessible multi-sensory story time. We are so glad to have you with us today. This is the time if you have a caregiver who's kind of helping you out participate, we know and it's okay if you or your person who's helping you can't write in the chat. We're going to take our time and really enjoy this story. So again, I'm going to welcome you to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. Our topic today is Snowmen at Night, an accessible multi-sensory story time. Now, if you do have the ability to say hi in the chat, you're welcome to. We love having all of our friends with us. And as Robin said before, if you are watching this recording, we are so glad to have you with us during that as well. I am going to introduce Paige Furbush. Hello, Paige. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I'm going to turn it over to you. It is all yours. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Paige, and I am a teacher of the deaf blind at Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. And I'm so excited to be here with you all today and share one of my favorite stories to read in the winter. So I'm looking at the chat and I see a hi from Abigail. Hi, Abigail. Hi, Donnie. Hi, Clara. I'm so happy that you are all able to join us. So we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Again, we're reading the book, Snowmen at Night. So right now I'm holding up the cover just so we can take a look at that. Um, on the cover of this book, we see the words snowmen at night. I see a couple snowmen standing at the top of the page. Up at the top, it looks like it's daytime. The sun is out. These snowmen are in front of houses in someone's front yard. And then if we look down at the bottom of our book cover, we can see a line of snowmen at night. So the moon is in the sky. These snowmen look like they're on the move and having a blast. Um, I see a hi from Gregory. Hi, Gregory. So glad you could join us. So today what we're going to be doing is kind of experiencing our story in a couple of different ways. So first, we are going to get more familiar with some of the concepts and vocabulary words that we're going to encounter in our story through yoga. So we'll do some yoga poses that will kind of warm up our bodies. I love starting any learning activity with some movement because I feel like Getting my body moving really helps kind of wake up my brain, wake up my ears so I'm ready to listen and really pay attention to what's in our story and follow it along. Um, after we do our yoga, we will read the book Snowman at Night. And then finally, at the end, we will build a snowman together if you want. Um, I have some Play-Doh with me to make my snowman. If you have Play-Doh at home, you can grab that now. Or a friend or family member or caregiver can get that for you. Um, if you don't have any Play-Doh, that's totally fine. Um, you don't need to build along with us. I just thought it would be fun to end with a little bit of sensory play. So let's get started. Um, I think we can tell by the title of our book that our book is going to be about snowmen. And we make snowmen out of snow. I don't think it snows in the summer where I live, but it does snow in the winter. And since it is winter time right now, I thought it was definitely appropriate. Um, I don't know if any of my friends tuning in today have snow where you live, but you can let me know in the chat if you'd like. Um, if you don't have snow where you live, you can let me know if you've ever gone out and played in the snow. So I live in Utah. We have lots and lots of mountains. Um, but this winter, we really don't have any snow. There is no snow on the ground, which is very unusual. 
for Utah. We usually have lots and lots of snow. It's usually really cold. So we don't have any snow right now, but I'd love to know if there's snow where you are. So snow comes down from the sky. It's dropped through clouds. And when snow comes down, it comes down as snowflakes. Oh, Abigail says no snow where she lives. Me too, Abigail. So we can see snowflakes falling down from the sky when it's snowing. And our first yoga pose that we're gonna do, we're gonna call it the snowflake pose. Oh, Donnie says no snow where he is either. That's so crazy. None of us have any snow. So hopefully today we can kind of pretend like we have some snow and imagine what it would be like if we were out playing in the snow. Okay, so as we're doing our yoga, you can absolutely stand up for our standing poses. You don't have to stand up. If you'd rather sit on the floor or sit in your wheelchair or just sit in your chair, you can absolutely do that. I am sitting on the ground because that's where I'm most comfy. So I am going to stay sitting, but I will let my friends who want to stand up for yoga know what they can do with their bodies while they're standing. So our first pose again is going to be snowflake pose. So if you're standing, you're gonna stand with your feet wide apart. So imagine the distance between your left and your right shoulder, and that's about the same dis distance you're gonna want your feet apart, okay? So feet kind of wide apart, planted on the ground, if you're sitting down, just try to sit up as tall as you can, get your back nice and straight. We are going to reach both hands out to the side. So my arms are straight. I, they're right at shoulder height, so I don't have my arms lifted up. They're just straight out to the side. And in this pose, I just wanna take a couple deep breaths. So we're gonna breathe in, through our noses, just like you're smelling a flower. So let's do that together right now. Take a deep breath in. And we're gonna blow our breath out of our mouths, just like we're blowing out a birthday candle. So ready, out. One more time, in through your nose. Smell that flower. And out through your mouth, blow out the candle. So when snowflakes fall from the sky, they spin. They spin and spin in a circle as they are falling down in the air to the ground. So for my friends who are standing, you can keep your arms out to the side and spin in a circle, spin in a circle. Remember I'm sitting. So my friends who are sitting, we can just rotate or turn our torso, so where our tummy and ribs are, side to side, so left and right. So it kind of makes one arm go to the front and one arm go to the back. As I spin, then I switch sides and do it again. Spinning, 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 just like a snowflake falling through the air. Okay, my arms are getting kind of tired. I'm gonna let them relax. Let's just take a nice second to roll our shoulders back, kind of relieve some of that tension. Okay, and our next pose is going to be the snowman pose. And this pose is exactly the same as our snowflake pose. We're just not going to spin around. So when I imagine a snowman, I imagine one that's tall and still. I've never seen a snowman move around and we usually make their arms out of something hard that stays still like sticks or tree branches. So we're gonna bring our arms right back up to where they were. And I promise we won't hold this pose for as long if your shoulders are getting tired. So just bring your arms up nice and straight out to the sides, just like before. 
Get your fingers nice and straight, kind of flex those muscles, imagining that they're as still as tree branches or sticks that we've used for a snowman's arms. And we can slowly lift our arms up above our head, keeping them nice and straight. Slowly bring our arms back down to the side again, keeping them nice and straight. And we'll just take a second to kind of recenter, relax. We'll do another two deep breaths. So remember we breathe in through our nose, smell a flower, out through our mouth, blowing out a candle. Ready? We'll breathe in. And out. That's one. Let's do one more in through our nose and out through our mouth. Okay. So we are going to hear about snowmen using a sled during our story today. So I want everyone to think about if they've ever used a sled in their life or if they know what a sled is. I'll just wait a minute and see if anyone can tell me in the chat, have you been on a sled or do you know what a sled is? Talking about a sled. Okay, so Abigail says that yes, she has been on a sled. I've been on a sled too. So I've only ever been on a sled when there's snow on the ground. A sled, oh, Donnie says he does not like snow. So I'm gonna take that as probably a no, you've not been on a sled. If you don't like snow, I would guess that a sled would not be your favorite thing. Oh, Mateo says that he's been on a sled too. That's awesome. So it's okay if you've yes been on a sled or no, have not been on a sled. A sled can be made out of wood or plastic. And it's basically like a little, almost like a box if it's shaped like a square rectangle. You might have sat on a plastic saucer. That's a kind of sled. That's usually plastic. Um, it has a round bottom, almost like a little bowl that you sit in the middle, hold the sides. And whether it's a sled or a saucer, you sit on it at the top of a hill with snow and use the sled to slide down the hill. Okay, so our next yoga pose is going to be a sl the sled pose. So what you're gonna do is you can either sit with your legs straight out in front of you on the ground. Remember, we're trying to keep our back nice and straight. If you're in a chair or a wheelchair, you can just stay in that position. And we're gonna pretend like we're zooming down a hill really fast on a sled. So we're gonna lean our body forward. So we're bringing our tummy closer to our legs that are flat on the ground. If you can, you can try to reach out in front of you and touch your toes. Um, see if you can get your head a little bit closer to your legs. And now we're kind of in the same shape we would be if we were on a sled. So remember we're leaning forward. We can feel a nice stretch in the back of our legs and you can close your eyes and imagine that you are riding a sled down a hill. If you were really riding a sled down a hill, you might hear like a whoosh, whoosh sound of your sled kind of cruising through the snow. So again, just keep stretching as much as you can. We'll take a deep breath in and out through our mouth. Imagining we're on a sled. You could even try leaning your body over to the left, leaning your body over to the right. You might find yourself leaning to the left and right on a real sled because this is what helps you turn. So we can go to the left, we can go to the right. Let's do one more time each side, leaning our body over to the left. 
Don't lean too far. We don't want you to fall down. Leaning our bodies over to the right. Slowly come back to the center or the middle. So your body should be facing just straight in front of you. And we'll come back to sitting up nice and straight. So the last pose that we're gonna do today before we read our story, I am calling it the sleepy snowman. So our, we know our snowmen are gonna get on a sled in our book. I'm not sure if they're gonna do anything else, but I know that when I go sledding outside or do anything else outside where I'm moving around a lot, I get kind of tired. So this is our sleepy snowman pose. So to get our bodies ready for this, if we can, we're gonna come up to sit on our knees. So your legs are bent and your feet are right underneath you. It's kind of like you're sitting back on the heels of your feet. So we're gonna be a sleepy snowman. I don't know about you, but when I sleep, I don't sleep sitting up. So with my legs in this position, again, we're sitting on our knees, our bottom should be touching our shoes or the bottoms of our feet. We're gonna reach forward. So I'm gonna try to not go out of view. Let's see if I can scoop back a little. So we're gonna reach forward and bring our tummy and our chest down to our legs, down to the floor. When you get down to the floor, you can rest your forehead down on the floor so your forehead is touching the floor and we are pretending that we are sleeping sleeping like a snowman so again our foreheads touching the floor we're reaching down as far as we can if you are sitting in a chair or sitting in your wheelchair you can just go ahead and bring your head down either to your legs and your knees or you could just bring your head down into your hands and pretend like you are sleeping. So my fingers are touching my forehead, my eyes are closed. I'll take a nice big deep breath and out through my mouth, in through my nose, out through my mouth, and I'll come back up to sitting. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my shoulders can shake out your hands. We can bend our neck to the right, bend our neck to the left, move our neck in a circle if that feels good for you. One more deep breath. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I am ready to listen to the story. So let's get started. Okay, so again, the title or the name of our book is Snowmen at Night. The author of our book or the person who wrote the words is Carolyn Buner. And the illustrator or the person who drew the pictures in our book is Mark Buner. Okay. So the way we're gonna read our book is I'm first going to read the words on the page, okay? And while I'm reading the words out loud, I really want everyone that's listening to start painting a picture in your mind of what you think is going on. We're really gonna use our brains today, really gonna use our listening ears today. And after we've read the words on the page, then we'll talk about the pictures and look at the pictures, okay? So our first page says, one wintry day, I made a snowman, very round and tall. <gasps> but the next day when I saw him, he was not the same at all. Hmm. Let's take a look at our picture, talk about what we can see. Okay, so on this page, I see a child wearing a nice warm hat, it's red and yellow stripes, got a warm scarf to keep his neck warm, 
big puffy jacket and mittens building his snowman. He is putting a carrot on the top of the snowman or in the middle of the top snowball of the snowman. There's his nose. This snowman is round. He's made out of three big snowballs. He has a hat on his head, two black eyes. Maybe some rocks have been put on the snowman to make his mouth. And he's smiling. Our snowman also has a scarf wrapped around his neck. Have any of my friends ever made a snowman? I have. I've made a couple snowmen in my life. Some snowmen I've made have been big and tall, so taller, bigger than me. I've made some little tiny snowmen outside. That's usually a little bit faster. How about you? Have you ever made a snowman? Okay, Abigail says, yes, she's made a snowman. Do you remember any of the items or things you put on your snowman? Did you give him a face? Was he wearing clothes? Oh, Allison's made a snowman. Clara's made a snowman. I think that's great that so many of you have made a snowman in real life. So you know exactly what this book is talking about. Donnie has never made a snowman. That's okay, Donnie. We're going to go through all the different steps to make a snowman today. And if you have some Play-Doh or anything like soft and squishy that you could use, you can make a snowman today too. Allison says she has a snowman kit. I love that. So you have everything you need to make a snowman. All right, let's keep going. His hat had slipped. His arms drooped down. He really looked a fright. It made me start to wonder, hmm, what do snowmen do at night? What do snowmen do at night? I've never thought about that before. So remember, she said his arms had drooped down. The snowman's hat is falling off. He looks a little bit shorter. He's not as tall as he was the day before. What could have happened to the snowman overnight? Hmm. What could he have been doing that made his hat slide off, made his arms droop down? Hmm, I think we're about to find out. Let's kind of talk about what we see. So our child in our story is looking at the snowman. She looks kind of confused. Like, what happened to you? And the snowman's still in the snow, probably in her front yard, but he's definitely shorter, definitely droopier. He does not look the same that he did the night before. Hmm. Hmm. I think that snowmen start to slide when it gets really dark off the lawn and down the street right into the park. Hmm. So they think that the snowmen leave at night. They leave the front yard, go out into the street, and snowmen don't have legs or feet, so they are sliding through the street. So let's see. Wow, so it's definitely nighttime. In this picture, the sky is very dark. We are looking at a street in a neighborhood because I see houses, so I'm guessing people live there. There's some cars parked on the street. They are covered in snow. And here come all the snowmen. They are sliding from their front yards out into the street. Sounds like they're headed to the park. Hmm. These snowmen all look really happy. I wonder what they're going to do in the park. 
Does anyone have any guesses on what the snowmen are heading out to do? So we know they're going to the park. When I go to the park, I take my dog sometimes. We run around, we play fetch with a ball. If I'm at a park with a playground, I might wanna go on the slide. Abigail says they're gonna go do a walk. That's a really good guess. Abigail looks like they're definitely going for a walk. Ooh, Donnie says play on the playground. Yeah, I love that idea, Donnie. That's what I would like to do at the park. Hmm. So they're going to the park. Let's see what they're gonna do. They gather in a circle. So they're standing in a circle while they wait for all the others. Sipping cups of ice cold cocoa made by snowman mothers. Hmm. Sounds like they're getting a nice drink. So I don't usually drink ice cold cocoa. I like my cocoa hot. Why do you think the snowmen need to drink cold cocoa? Hmm. So in this picture, I can see a lot of snowmen. So there's about one, two, three, four standing up in a circle, drinking their cocoa out of a white cup. I see three more snowmen. They're sitting by a picnic table at the park and they have some cups of cold cocoa there. I see another snowman in the back. He is sliding down the hill. Looks like he's coming to play. Okay, Abigail and Riley say the cocoa is cold so the snowmen don't melt. I think you guys are right. I think if our snowmen were drinking hot cocoa, they'd be really sad because hot liquid would melt the snow. So here are all our snowmen. They've got their warm winter hats on, nice warm scarves on their neck. They have a hot cocoa mustache, or no, they have cold cocoa mustache up above their mouth. Rosy cheeks, because it's so cold outside. And Donnie says he doesn't have Play-Doh to build a snowman today. Donnie, that is totally fine. You don't need Play-Doh. We can just pretend you can watch me and listen to me make my snowman. Um, and we can just pretend like we're building one together. So don't worry if you don't have Play-Doh. Okay, it says, then the snowman games begin. They line up in their places. Each snowman anxious for his turn in the snowman races. Okay, so our snowmen have gotten their drinks and they are ready to race. Look at that. So now we can see two big, tall snowmen. It looks like they are running. Their bodies are leaning forward. Their arms are bent. They are running, running, running. One of the snowmen is running so fast that her hat is flying off in the air. I can see behind the snowmen, there are two lines of more snowmen. They are waiting for their turn to race. One snowman behind has even fallen down. He's fallen down and his hat fell off. It looks like he's kind of rolling around on the ground. Uh-oh, I think he slipped. What do you think? Would you guys like to have a race with a snowman? or a race out in the snow with your friends. You gotta be really careful if we're running in the snow because snow is slippery. We don't wanna fall down like our guy in the back. Ooh, Riley says, sure. He wants to race with the snowman. I think that sounds like a fun thing to do in a park, to run around and have a race. Get some exercise. Okay, so after everyone has had a turn at racing once or twice, they go on over to the pond and do skating tricks on ice. I didn't even think about ice skating. Sounds like they have a pond in their park. 
that they can ice skate on. So in the winter, the water in the pond freezes and turns into ice. That means it's solid and it can hold you up on it. So they are doing skating tricks on ice. I wonder if any of you guys have gone ice skating before. These snowmen are ice skating, but without ice skates. So they are just sliding around on that big snowball that's on the bottom. They're sliding around. It says they're doing tricks. I wonder if they can spin around in a circle on the ice. Maybe if someone was really good at ice skating, they could jump up in the air, leap in the air on the ice. Donnie says he has bad balance. Donnie, so do I. I will tell you guys that the last time I went ice skating was when I was a grown up. Okay. I had to hold on to my brother's waist. So he stood in front of me. I held on to his waist and he had to pull me around the ice rink because my balance is not great. So I could not stand up on my ice skates without some help. So I really needed my brother there to help me out on the ice rink. Abigail says she likes to go ice skating, but she needs her dad to hold her up. Me too, Abigail. I need someone to hold me up. Ice skating's hard. These snowmen look like some are ice skating really well. And look, there's even some snowmen that have fallen down in the back. And that's okay. I've fallen down a lot when I've tried ice skating and it doesn't hurt too bad. And at least I'm trying something new. So here are all our snowmen spinning around on the ice. And I even see some snowmen in our picture helping each other out. They're holding on to each other's hands to help them on the ice. That helps us if we can't balance very well by ourselves. Okay, sometimes they start giggling and then they act like clowns. They bump into each other until they all fall down. So they're giggling, they're laughing, kind of acting like a clown. So getting kind of goofy, bumping into each other, falling down in the snow. Sounds like they're having a lot of fun. They fell down. So look at all our snowmen. They were going kind of crazy, bumping into each other, fell down. Now they're all laying in the snow. I even see some snowmen that are moving their arms up and down, up and down in the snow. So they're making kind of the impression of wings in the snow. Some people call those snow angels. They look like they're having a lot of fun. I see all of the snowmen with big smiles on their faces. They look like they're laughing. When I look at this picture, I think it looks really cold to be laying with your head in the snow. I would need a big snowsuit to want to fall in the snow and move my arms up and down like this. I think that looks like a pretty fun time. They've done a lot in the park so far. Next, they gather up their snowballs. So they've pushed snow together in their hands and made it into a ball. The pitcher, so the person that's who's throwing the ball takes his aim and underneath the moonlit sky, they play a baseball game. Hmm baseball game with snowballs. Wow. Abigail says she's made snow angels and a ton of snow fell in her face while she did it. What did you think about that, Abigail? I think that might make me kind of upset <laughs> if there was snow falling in my face because it gets so cold. Let's check out our snowmen. Wow. Look how bright the moon is. Looks like it's really late at night. The sky is still super dark. And these snowmen have a big pile of snowballs. One snowman is throwing it at another snowman who's holding a broom. I think he's gonna hit the snowball with his broom. And there's a bunch of other snowmen kind of standing around in a circle. Do you think they'll be able to catch the snowball after our snowman hits it with a broom? 
I wonder if you could do that. I feel like if I hit a snowball with a broom, it might break because snow is not that solid. Maybe you could make an ice ball and try to play baseball with that. That might hold its shape a little better, but you have to be really careful that you didn't hit anybody. So they're playing baseball now. That sounds fun. <laughs> No one knows just how it started, but soon it's quite a sight with snowmen throwing snowballs in the world's best snowball fight. Riley says that would be messy. I think you're right. I think having or playing baseball with snowballs could be really messy. I think snow would get everywhere. So now they're having a snowball fight. Donnie says laugh out loud. I agree, this looks so silly and kind of crazy. Look at these snowmen. Now they all have snowballs, throwing them at the same time at each other. They're still laughing. You can see one snowman got his hat knocked off by a snowball. Oh no, <gasps> there's a snowman hiding up on a slide in the back of our picture. I bet he could throw a snowball from up high on the slide and get someone that was down on the ground. There are so many snowballs flying through the air and these snowmen just look like they are having the time of their lives. I think they like it. How about you guys? Do you like snowball fights? Do you wanna have one if there was snow where you lived? Go outside and throw snowballs at each other. just like our snowmen. Abigail says snowball fights are so much fun. I'm glad that you like snowball fights. Oh, Riley says snowball fights are so much, says it would be fun. Maybe Abigail and Riley could have a snowball fight with each other. If there was a snowball fight going on by me, I think it would be fun to watch, but I don't love getting hit with a snowball because again, I just don't like being very cold. And I feel like every time I've had a snowball fight, somehow a snowball has ended up hitting me right in the face. And that is cold and kind of startling. So I don't know. I'll watch you have a snowball fight, but I don't know if I'll do it. Okay. So they've had their snowball fight and then it's time for sledding. We just talked about a sled. It's a wild ride down the hill. So remember, we talked about how you have to get to the top of a hill. So you got to walk up there first. And then once you're at the top, you can slide down on the snow. <gasps> These snowmen have a really big hill to sled down. I see snowmen with all different kinds of sleds. I see some wooden sleds that are shaped like a rectangle. We talked about those. I see some black sleds that are shaped like a circle. So that might be a saucer. We also talked about saucers. I see an orange sled at the top of a hill and all these snowmen sliding down the steep hill. Other snowmen are walking up, 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 up to the top of the hill, getting ready to go down. They are really high up. If you look at the back of our picture, you can see all of the houses and they look like they are shorter than the hill. So I'm guessing this is a really tall hill. If a hill is really tall and steep, your sled will probably go super fast down the hill. I think that looks like a lot of fun. I would like to go sledding with these snowmen. <gasps> Wahoo! They yell. This is by far the snowman's greatest thrill. So thrill is another word we can use like for something that makes us really excited or something that's really exciting. You would feel like it's thrilling 
zooming down the hill and yelling, wahoo! Sounds like they really like this. So let's take a look at our picture. <gasps> look at this. We have five snowmen sharing one of the wooden rectangular sleds. So I think that's nice about a rectangle sled is they're longer so you can fit more people on. We have one snowman in the front holding on to the rope. Again, that rope's gonna kind of help them turn if they need to. And these snowmen have the biggest smiles on their faces. Their mouths are wide open, remember, because they are yelling, woohoo, as they go down the hill. Their scarves are flying back behind them because of the wind. I see one snowman going down by himself. He might be on a saucer. His sled has actually gone up in the air. So he's flying through the air and his hats come off his head. I think this looks like a blast. I would love to do this with the snowmen. So they've had a really busy night. They've done a ton of things. So finally, they are tuckered out and getting really sleepy. So slowly they gather up their things. They have a lot of things to get, remember? They brought cold cocoa. They brought, what else? Sleds. Some of them might have needed to bring ice skates. Um, some of them lost their hats when they were sledding, so they might have needed to gather up their hats. So they slowly gather up all those things and one by one they go. So they're done in the park. They are going back home, sounds like. So let's see, let's look at these snowmen. Oh my gosh, the sun is starting to come up. I can see the sky getting lighter in this picture. They've been out playing all night long. One snowman is dragging his snowman friend behind him on a sled. I think this snowman got so tired they fell asleep. So he needs to drag him home on a sled. I see a mitten in the snow. Some of the snowmen have lost their hats, lost their scarves, lost their mittens. Oof, they look tired. Here they go, slowly back home. I move really slow when I'm tired too. So if your snowman's grin or smile is crooked, that means it's kind of fallen off to the side, or he's lost a little height, so he's shorter than he was yesterday, now you know just what snowmen do at night. So now we know. We are looking at our snowman from the beginning of the book again. See, he's kind of lopsided, his nose is falling off, his arms are hanging down, his mittens are on the ground, his buttons on the front have fallen off, his hat's falling off. And now we know. Who can tell me one thing that the snowman did that made him look this way? What's one thing you remember from our story that the snowman did at night? Okay, Abigail remembers one thing. She says one thing our snowman did was play baseball. Yep, you are correct, Abigail. They played baseball. So that was something they did at night. I wonder, just really quick, is this what you guys do at night? Are you out playing baseball? racing in the park, going ice skating. Yeah, Riley says the snowmen went to the park. How about you, Riley? Do you go to the park at nighttime? Donnie says, I go to bed. Me too. I am not at the park at night. I'm sleeping. So it sounds like these snowmen do the opposite of us. So they're out playing, going to the park, seeing their friends at nighttime, when that's what we do in the daytime, because we're sleeping at night. 
I wonder why the snowmen do all this stuff at nighttime. Why don't they go in the day? Oh, Riley says that they're sleeping too. Same, I'm not going to the park at night. But the snowmen are, they're going at nighttime. <laughs> Something to think about of why you think they would go at night. I think, oh, oh, this is a really good comment that Donnie has. I'm excited to share this with you. So Donnie says they're nocturnal snowmen. That's a really good word. So for anyone who doesn't know what nocturnal means, nocturnal means that the animal or creature or whatever is awake at nighttime and then they sleep during the day. So that's a really good guess. Donnie's snowmen might be nocturnal. Riley says that others might get scared of them. That's a really good guess too. I'm not sure what I would do if I saw a snowman up and walking around during the day. I don't know if I would be scared. I might be. Probably just think it was a little weird, unexpected. We don't know if snowmen move around, but in this book they do. They just do it at night. So maybe they're keeping that a secret. Maybe they don't want us to know that they can move around. So they do it at night because they know that all of us are at home sleeping in our beds. Okay, so that's the end of our story. And for anybody who wants to stay to build a snowman, we can, we have a couple more minutes left. So again, if you have something to build a snowman out of, so it could be Play-Doh, Silly Putty, anything like that, um, you can get that out now. If you don't have Play-Doh or something to build a snowman with, you are welcome to stay and see how I do it and kind of help with some of my decisions when I make my snowman. Or you can wrap it up and be done with our activity for the day. So it's totally up to you. So I have this Play-Doh that's kind of like snow Play-Doh. So it's a little bit more fluffy than normal Play-Doh. So to make a snowman, we need to make three snowballs. One big snowball that's going to go on the bottom. One medium snowball that goes in the middle. And then one small snowball or ball that goes on the top. So first we're going to make our biggest ball. Okay. So I like to kind of measure this out by putting enough Play-Doh to almost cover the palm of my hand. So right now I just kind of have a mound or a big piece of Play-Doh covering the palm of my hand. If you don't have enough Play-Doh to make a ball this big, that's totally fine. Just pull out a chunk of Play-Doh and make sure you have some left over because we have two more balls to make. So I'm gonna make it into a ball by pressing it in between my two hands. So I'm kind of curving my fingers. So they almost make the shape of like a half circle and I'm pushing both sides at the same time, okay? Another way to make a ball with any kind of material like this is you can roll it between your hands. So you kind of move it, you move your hands almost in a circular motion while the Play-Doh is in the middle and that's gonna roll it up into a ball. I just feel like pressing it between my hands a little bit easier, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we just want it so I can kind of close my eyes and feel, okay, does this feel like a ball shape? It should feel circular. It means it's round. I think it feels pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this ball to the side, okay? So remember, let's see. I have one big ball. So I have that right here, just on the table in front of me. So next I'm gonna take some Play-Doh. So the amount is going to be, hmm, let's say about half as much as our big ball. So about half as much. That means that two portions of this would equal one of your big ball. So we're gonna do the same thing with this Play-Doh or clay, whatever you're using. 
I'm just pressing it between my two hands that are in that circular shape, okay? So my fingers are bent, so it's like a circle. Okay, so I'm not gonna look at it, I'm just feeling it and I'm thinking, does this feel pretty close to the shape of a ball? Again, we're looking for round edges, circular, we might call it a sphere. Got a nice big vocabulary like our friend Donnie, you threw out nocturnal. We're making spheres. Those are 3D, three-dimensional circles. This one's medium. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right on top of my big ball. Okay. So we can see we have one big ball on the bottom, medium in the middle. So that's kind of his body right there. What is our snowman missing? Does anyone know? He needs something on top. What is it? What's the last piece our snowman needs? Goes on top. It's the same body part that's on the top for us. Ooh, Donnie says a hat. I like that idea a lot. But first, I'm going to make a small snowball or a small ball to be his head. And then we'll put the hat on top. So you are right, Donnie, you are just one step ahead of me. I like how you're thinking. So now I have just a small portion of Play-Doh or clay in my hand. This is gonna be the smallest ball. And again, just pushing with two hands in a curved position to mold it into a circular shape. All right, and I'm gonna take that small ball and put it right on top. And if you're still working on any of your balls, that is totally fine. Um, we don't need to be, let's see, I'm actually gonna move it like this. We don't need to be at the same step. Um, we're just getting close to our two o'clock end time. So we'll keep going, making our snow snowman, but you can keep working on this even when we're all done. So Donnie said, our snowman needs a hat. So good thing I brought a hat to put on my snowman. Oh, so I have put a little straw hat on my snowman. And this hat is almost bigger than my snowman's head. So the hat is actually covering up what would be my snowman's face. I can't see anything on the front. So let's see if I tilt the hat back. Okay, so I put the hat on the back of my snowman's head. I'll be able to see his face. What do I put on a snowman's face? Anybody have any ideas? We could think about what's on our faces and make sure we add that to our snowman. Hmm, what goes on our face? All right, we need eyes and a nose, you are right. So I brought two, the really small, tiny black buttons that I'm gonna use for eyes for my snowman, okay? So I'm gonna turn them around. I'm gonna put the button eyes right up. Oh, I don't know, mine are gonna stay. There we go, okay, so we'll put our buttons on for eyes, so now my snowman has two eyes and he needs a nose. And I have a little triangle, it's orange to look like a carrot and I'm gonna put his nose on. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, so now my snowman has eyes and a nose. I'm gonna give him his hat back. Is there anything else that you guys would wanna add? to our snowman. I think he might need to go play with the other snowmen out in the park. Hmm, what else could we add to our snowman? So I'm thinking 
about some of the activities our snowmen were doing. They played baseball and they threw snowballs at each other. So I think my snowman needs arms for that. So I'm gonna put two arms and I'm just using pipe cleaners on the sides. So the arms are going into the middle of my medium ball, right on the side. So one arm or pipe cleaner on the left, one arm or pipe cleaner on the right. And Donnie says, this will be the last thing we add to our snowman. Donnie says, we've got to add a scarf. I think you're right, Donnie. I think our snowman needs a scarf. He's got to keep his neck warm while he's out all night playing in the snow. So I just tied a bow out of another pipe cleaner. This one is shiny and green. So if this goes on my snowman's neck, I'm just going to press it right at the top again of our medium snowball. So let's take a look. We made our snowman. Thank you guys so much for all your input and help making my snowman. I think he's ready to go outside and play with the other snowmen in the park. Okay, so this wraps up our lesson for today. Thank you guys so much for coming and all your participation. I loved hearing your thoughts and your ideas about what these snowmen were doing at night and what you do at night. Um, thanks again, and I hope I can see you guys all again soon. That was great, Paige. Um, my name is Amy, and we haven't gotten to make friends yet, Paige, but Leanne had to leave a few minutes uh, a little bit ago, so I came in to close things up, but I really really enjoyed today's activity. I thought it was super fun and I loved the creativity. So thank you for coming with us and giving us this today. Um, everyone out there, we hope you will have a great weekend and that you plan on joining us next week on Tuesday. We are multitasking with music. So we get to enjoy uh, music with our senses. On Wednesday, we are up, up and away learning about air travel. And then next Thursday, come back and join us too for Let's Explore Coins. We get to think about how coins feel and they sound and they look and they smell. So until then, have a great weekend and we will see you next week.